Hey guys, I'm zooming you in just a bit so you can see what I'm doing a little better. So I have this bee in my bonnet about making a micro mini travel watercolor kit. Something that I literally could like throw in my purse that's really, really teeny that I could um, do a little artwork with. I'm doing like sketches and stuff every day now and carrying around my big kit in my handbag is just not realistic. Maybe a little micro mini kit that would fit in my little sketch daily bag that would be ideal because that's not very big. So I got this little, these are, uh, this is Altoids Smalls. Like this is a mini, <laughs> mini Altoids box. This is so little. So it literally is like two and three eighths by like one and five eighths. It's really small and it's only about a half inch tall. So, and these, so what I'm doing is it's going to fit um, six colors, a very basic set. I've taken different kinds of lids. <clears throat> these are the lids off of some like spray bottles. And these are the lids off of some seed bead tubes like this. Um, I save a few empty tubes and bottles and things around um, <clears throat> for doing things like this with. I When my storage space I have for them is full, then I don't save anymore. But um, um, I'm so glad I figured out a way to, to use up some of them. So on these little black ones from the seed beads, we have to cut this little handle off. This is my hot knife. Now, a word of caution, this is hot and sharp. So please do not do this if you're young without the supervision of an adult. And please, even if you're an adult, take all precautions. Um, we don't want anybody burning themselves or cutting themselves. I got this in the wood crafting department at Michael's. And then I'm going to cut about an um, eighth of an inch off the top because this little black cap is a little bit too big. My cuts aren't coming out exactly straight, but I'm not too concerned about that. Because this knife is hot and sharp, it's able to cut through the plastic pretty easily. Of course, you know, it helps if I cut it straight through the plastic, which I didn't. I don't think I've done a single one of these straight. Okay, so then what you can do, it, what I've been doing is putting my hot knife in the stand here, and then I just take the little cap, keeping my fingers well away from the hot blade, and I just turn it so that it's flat facing me, and then I just basically just melt the edge to smooth it out a bit. It, you know, if you've really done a great job whacking it off crookedly, it's only going to do so much, and I've done a couple of these really greatly crooked. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, they're never going to be perfectly straight, but it's okay. So then this one goes here. The little black ones are going to hold a little less paint than the clear ones. So my plan was to put some of the colors that I use the most in the clear ones. On the clear ones, because they're clear, I was able to mark it with a um, black marker where I need to cut doesn't mean it'll come out straight because they haven't. And, and this black plastic is actually a bit harder to cut than, I mean the clear plastic is a bit harder to cut than the black plastic. So just go slow because we don't want anybody to get hurt. I don't want me to get hurt as I'm saying that. Because you all know my middle name is neither Patience nor Grace. Right? And it's probably a good thing you can't see me because I'm one of these people that when you cut things that you make faces. Yeah, that's me. Alright, so now it's cut in half. That's good. And that one will fit right in there. And now to clean this uh, plastic off of here, I'm just going to scrape it with a palette knife and wipe it on some paper towel. Okay. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to set it aside on the glass. This is a glass cutting board. 
so that should it fall out of the stand, it lands on the glass and not on my table or something that will catch fire or melt because we want to be safe. And I'm going to double check to make sure that it's off, and it is. All right, I'll take a couple minutes to cool off. Now we have this little micro mini tin with some wells in it. So now we're going to glue these in. This is going to be like in my handbag or, you know, tossed around. So I want to make sure the paint is not going to go anywhere. So this is just E6000. And I'm going to just put it in the, I could put it on the bottom of the little, oh uh, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to put it on the bottom of the caps. And if a little bit squeezes out, I'm okay with that because it'll actually cover the bottom of the tin a bit which will protect it from getting too wet and hopefully it won't get rusty. Um, had them arranged a particular way. I'm trying to remember what way that was. Let's see. I think it was like this. And then one more big one. Okay. Now, while that's drying a bit, I'm going to pick some paint colors, uh, six basics for me. They may not be the same basics for you, but I'm going to pick six basics and I'll be right back. Okay, we've got our micro mini watercolor kit here. I've picked out a few tubes of watercolor. I'm going to use some of the Koi colors that I have. I have lots of different brands of paint. My favorite is actually Daniel Smith, but I have these Koi and I think they would be good to use in this kind of a kit. I'm not sure about how these two koi tubes dry and if they would crack when they dry. So as a precaution, we're going to put a little bit of gum arabic in each one of the wells. And then when I put the paint in, we're going to give it a little bit of a stir. I have a basic set of colors that you can mix a lot of different colors from. Um, Instead of having two yellows, I've put in a Payne's gray. For me, um, that's a must. So I have a really nice lemon yellow, and I can warm that up a bit by adding just a little bit of red or the vermilion to it, um, just to orange it up. Orange it, orange it up a little bit. I don't know how to say that. Anyway, you all know what I mean. A vermilion, carmine, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, and then. Um, Blick uh, watercolor, um, I almost said Blick acrylic, or <laughs> it's watercolor, in Payne's Gray. The Bl Dick Blick brand is affordable, um, good quality brand from what I've been finding, FYI. Okay, so first we're going to take some of our gum Arabic, which I've put into this easier to pour bottle, and I'm going to just put a couple of drops if it will come out. Let's see. I don't know if it's clogged. It might be. It's been a tad little bit since I've used it. Let's see. Seems like it's clogged. So let me unclog it. I'll be right back. It was definitely clogged. I just stuck a pin in there. Now it's unclogged. So I'm going to put a couple of drops in each little cap. The, the Blick watercolor probably doesn't need it, but it won't hurt anything. Gum Arabic is used as a binder in watercolor paints anyway, so it's not going to hurt anything. Then I'm going to put in our colors in color order, starting at the top and going from left to right, and then bottom left to right. You could fill them up to the top if you want, you don't need to. Probably depends on how long of a trip you're going to be on. If I was going to be on a long trip, this is probably not enough colors or enough paint for me. I have a bigger kit in my um, bigger watercolor palette in my kit that take, I take with me when I fly. Ultramarine, 
You could definitely, if you wanted to, you could do the color key and you could stick it inside the lid so that you have it right there. Got a bunch of toothpicks here. So we're going to just give each one a stir. Got the gum Arabic idea from Lindsay, the frugal crafter. Thank you very much. She used glycerin, which I have, but I also have gum Arabic, so I'm going to use it. I need more of that paint's gray. I can't see it going in because the cap is black and the paint is dark. So <laughs> we'll zoom you in, you see what I mean. So I can't see how much is in there until I gave it a stir. Let me see. There we go. That's better. Okay. And just give them a, a, a check and see if you've got enough paint in there. I think so. So now we need to make a color key and I don't know if I want to stick it in the lid. I think I want to leave it loose from the lid because I think I want to use the lid to mix on. Um, but I do think that I want to have it fit inside the lid loosely so that I can take it out. Something like that. So let me grab a piece of watercolor paper, and then I also have this little tiny pencil, which is from Ikea. <laughs> you see there? Ikea. Oops. Yeah, I didn't notice I took it home with me until after we got all the way home, and it's a couple hours away from my house, so I wasn't going to drive back to return the pencil. <laughs> I have a Koi um, travel water brush. This is the medium size brush nib, and the nice thing about it is that it breaks up and it also is like micro mini. It doesn't hold tons of water but you know this kit isn't intended for doing like tons of painting with anyway um, and you probably um, can you know I'm sure there's going to be some place where you are to refill it or if you're like me you always have a water bottle with you that you could refill it from. So that's going to work. So let me get some watercolor paper and I'm going to show you about making a color key for this sucker and an idea I got from Kathy Johnson, who has a YouTube channel here about water, painting watercolors. I'll try to link it below. And for making a little micro mini journal. So I will be right back.
Okay, so I have a scrap of watercolor paper here, and I probably should have done this before I put the paints in there, but um, oh well. I'm going to trace around the bottom of the box onto this scrap. Try to hold the box still and steady, which is kind of easier said than done. All right, and then let's cut this out. And I'm going to cut it inside the pencil lines. And basically I'm going to keep giving it a trim until it fits. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want it to fit, and I do want a sample of what my colors look like on paper rather than just seeing them in the in the pans there. There we go. All right. I really need to get my reading glasses. Okay, here we go reading glasses. All right, so now, make sure I'm on camera. I'm gonna take one of my waterproof fountain pens. I've got a couple of them. I've got a carbon ink pen, which is a really fine nib. And then I've got this other one that I just got that is, I don't remember the name of it. And I can't read it, but I got it from Jet Pens. If you guys want to know, I'll try to put it in the description below. Um, and they both have waterproof ink in them. This is a, more of a medium nib. It might be too big for this little piece of paper, but we'll, we're going to find out. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and draw a grid on here. Oh, Got to get the pen started first. Hold on. that one. They've both been sitting for a little bit and with these fountain pens it's not always a good thing. That one's looking okay. I think it's too skinny though. Let's see. Let's try the fine nibbed one. And we want to divide it into thirds. Okay, and we're going to write the color names. Uh, so I'm going to put the brand. Not that that matters too much in a travel kit because if you forget what brand it is, you can just put any lemony yellow color in there. I don't think it matters too much, but um, I'm used to doing it that way. Now we're going to take um, a brush. I have a water brush here. I don't know how clean it is. Oh, yeah, see, filthy. There we go. Now it's clean. So I'm going to dip it a little bit into the yellow and put my swatch. And then each color as I go down. Now I like to have a more orangey red and a pinky red in my palette 
I also like to have a more turquoisey blue and then a blue blue. Those color, particular colors are the colors I paint the most with when I'm watercoloring. And I'm used to mixing with them too. There we go. So once that dries, you could laminate it and then stick it in, um, back in the lid. You want to leave this open until all your little paints are dry. All the little, all the little cap paint in the caps are dry. If you close it, it might get moldy. So we want to leave it open. While it's doing its thing and it's drying, let's um, zoom back out again and I will show you what I was um, watching Kathy Johnson do the other day and we'll um, see about making a um, sort of micro mini watercolor journal. All right, I will get my paper. I'll be right back. Okay, this is a sheet of 9 by 12 watercolor paper, and I think if I use the whole thing, this is going to be a lot bigger than I want it to be. So we're going to chop some off. <laughs> I am going to, let's see. I think I'm going to do like, I want to do at least eight inches wide. And then I don't want it to be so long. The longer it is, the more pages this is going to have. We're going to do eight by ten. All right. So now you take your watercolor paper and fold it in half. And it's watercolor paper, so it's going to be persnickety about being folded. Where's my bone folder? Okay. Then you're going to fold these cut edges up to the raw edge and fold each side in half again. And I'm not worried about these like marks that are get on getting on here. This is, you know, I'm not concerned about that at all. This is like a micro mini little travel journal. It's going to get scuffed up and marked. It might bug you though. So then if that's the case, you want to make sure all your tools are really clean. Your cutting mat's really clean. Okay. So now you have this paper. It's got these four, th uh, three creases in it, four sections. Um, and if you, you know, I have to say, so this probably will work with some of it. So if you take a baby wipe and see, it's going to, um, it doesn't really get it off, but it just kind of spreads it out and it takes some of it off. Some of the marks anyway. Uh, all right. <clears throat> now we're going to do it the other way. So now we're going to straighten out our paper and we're going to fold it this way and do the same thing that we just did. Okay, so now we have this creased piece of watercolor paper. Now you need a X-Acto knife and a straight edge. I just have my exacto knife. There it is. That's not my straight edge. So we're going to go the long ways on the paper and we're going to cut along this fold and we're going to cut up to, we're going to cut up to this fold, this fold on my left. So one square, two square, three squares, not quite just below the fourth square. I'll link Kathy's video below. She explains it much better than I do, probably because she's done it a million times. Okay. 
There we go. Then we're going to skip this one and we're going to do this one over here the same way. We're going to flip this around and we're going to cut the same way but we're going to cut from the opposite direction up the middle and leave these two squares connected over here. Okay, so then you have this kind of this kind of piece of paper. Then you just start folding. Is that not the cleverest thing you've ever seen or what? So now you have this journal and you could just paint on these sides. You could, you know, when you get to this kind of thing, do like a taller picture. And you can do this with a really, she does it with really big sheets of paper. And she paints on all the, all the sides of the little journal. And she puts a cover on it and I do think I want to do that. Now see my cuts weren't completely straight so my edges are kind of cattywampus, but that's okay. All right, so now we want to do something about a cover. <laughs> I want to put a clip on this so it doesn't like expand all over the place. There we go. I'm going to get some chipboard. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got two little pieces of chipboard. They're cut about an eighth of an inch bigger than my little stack of pages. I want to co cover them with, I was thinking, just some scrap papers. And I have this little box of just literally just little bits and pieces and scraps but I was thinking some of these might look great on here oh you know I was looking for that the other day some of these are from making the cards and other little things so let's get let's get some of this covered um, let's use what kind of glue should we use Let's just use matte media. Uh, no, let's use gel. I'd rather use gel because these papers are different weights and thicknesses. So let's use gel medium. And I know that'll stick it on. You could use Elmer's if that's what you have. Let's try to get it on there semi straight. Well, that's as straight as it's going to get. Now, you don't have to wrap it around necessarily and worry about the back side because it's going to be glued to that first page, but I do, I think, want to wrap it around a little bit. Maybe, but I think I want to put all the papers on there first that I want on there before I do any wrapping. So let me do that and I will be right back. Okay, so now we're going to put our covers on our little book. I'm going to just use some scrapbooker's glue. This is by Scotch. Uh, I find this at Target. I, I actually really like this glue for just general paper crafting. It's a good glue. I'm going to be a, a tad on the generous side because I want it to stick well, of course. I made front and back covers that don't have any particular right or wrong direction. I'm going to just center it on there. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing to the other end. Um, but before we do, I think I want to put a little piece of string in there. I gotta find my string. Let's see. Well, maybe I don't want to put string. Kathy never put string. I have another idea, so we'll just glue the cover on. 
You could put a little ribbon in here to tie it like up with. I'm still thinking I want to do that. Okay, hang on. Let me find some string. I'll be right back. Okay, I found this little piece of twine that was from my friend Michelle Mitchell, I think, when she sent me some happy, t happy mail recently. And so I'm going to sandwich this between the watercolor paper and the other cover, other side of the cover. So first we're going to put our glue on here. Again, being a little on the generous side. Then I'm going to sandwich my, I'm going to stick my string in the glue. And then I want to put some more glue right on the string. Okay. Then I'm going to put my other cover and wiggle it around a bit. And now we need to put it under something heavy and let it dry. And then I can be back, we can be back and I will show you our micro mini portable watercolor kit. You ready? All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. So here is our micro mini watercolor travel kit. I can't even believe this worked out the way it did. So here's our finished little journal and it measures about two and an eighth by two and five eighths. Um, it has a string uh, on it so that um, you can tie it shut. Lots of little pages to just do little, you know, practice little, you know, little small pieces of work. Something just real quick while you're, you know, at Starbucks having a cup of coffee. And just wrap it around, tie it off. I probably could have put a button on here, but I don't have one on there. I might glue one on later. We'll see. But for right now, I can just tie it and that works fine. As long as I don't tie it in a knot, that works fine. And then this clear box I found again in my stash of stuff in the garage. This is from Target and I bought some of these um, large binder clips in it. They come in these clear plastic boxes. I, you know, always like, they're great for organizing things when you use up the binder clips. Anyway, so the pencil and the brush fit in here. The little, um, <laughs> the little paint palette fits in here. A little piece of paper toweling fits in here. The whole thing shuts. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, you know, this. <laughs> That's easy to fit in your, in your handbag. I mean, you know, honestly, small, convenient, easy, and the whole thing is not that big. This is my, you know, daily sketch bag, and, you know, I do have one bulky thing in here, my phone um, phone holder in case I'm, like, out somewhere and I want to, like, uh, periscope or record it um, with my phone. But this whole thing fits in here. It's not very big, so it fits in here really nicely, and this still it fits in here, and, it, you know, I don't want to tilt it too much because the paint is wet, but it'll fit in there really well and or this is going to fit really nicely in my handbag um, so there you have it I'm gonna just leave that out it's got to sit out for a couple of days and dry but micro mini travel kit you know if you have a really small um, if you want to just carry that around um, you could put those two things in a uh, plastic uh, I'm sorry canvas bag like this I got this at Hobby Lobby it's got my miniature colored pencils in it that would fit in here really nicely. I would still keep these bits in the plastic box because in case the water brush, um, you know, the plug comes out or the paints dribble out anywhere, the box is extra protection against things dribbling out into your handbag. But that aside, I think this is fabulous. <laughs> I can't believe I did it. Um, yeah. Wow, and if I had made the journal even smaller, it would actually fit in the box with everything else. Um, but I don't know that I would have wanted to make it, make it a whole lot smaller. You actually, if you could make it a little bit bigger, the box measures... Oh, yeah, yeah, three and three-eighths by like four and an eighth. If you made it a little bit bigger and, and skinnier, then it, you could just rubber band it to the box. That would work too. 
So anyway, there's some more ideas for, you know, micro mini travel watercolor kit. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Don't forget to go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later.